my name is Trevor Gates and I'm a supervising sound editor and sound designer. I've worked on films such as Get Out uh, from Jordan Peele, Jordan Peele's Us, which was just uh, released, um, uh, Atlanta Season 2 uh, from Donald Glover, and The Haunting of Hill House on Netflix. I graduated high school and decided to go straight to work um, actually in a, at a retail job um, and I was a musician at the time and also um, would like to do studio recording um, and uh, for 10 years I worked a retail job uh, and just as a freelance and as a passion I was doing studio recording and in my late 20s um, I decided to change that. The company that I had worked for for 10 years went out of business, and I decided to go back to school, and I moved to Los Angeles, um, and I went to the Art Institute of Los Angeles uh, in Santa Monica, and I received a Bachelor of uh, Science degree uh, in audio production. I became uh, involved in sound after I was a little bit frustrated with the music industry, um, and somebody gave me an opportunity to... Um, try out sound design for film and, and TV. And it turns out it uh, feeds my creative soul just as much as, as, as music did. A sound editor's job can vary um, in many different departments of uh, the sound that you hear on TV or film or maybe a video game. Um, there are production dialogue uh, jobs where you have to edit um, all the recordings that are recorded on set, um, take out the anomalies, um, make them smooth, um, um, make edits to, for creative reasons. Um, there are also uh, sound effects editors who create ambiences, who create sound effects for doors closing or um, cars or guns or things that are a little bit more surreal, space age, sci-fi, horror movies, um, and um, then there are you know several other different types of edi uh, editors like a Foley editor who um, takes all the recorded Foley um, that is performed um, to the movie and uh, makes it in sync a little bit more than it, than it was uh, as it was performed. Um, and uh, I think that's about it. Whoa. As a supervising sound editor, I'm always uh, in direct contact, usually in direct contact with um, the director and some of the producers uh, on a film or TV show. Um, it's my job as a supervising sound editor to um, build and curate a relationship with, with the director um, or whichever client is maybe what we call the showrunners who, who's in charge of calling the shots. Usually it's you know the director and sometimes it's a, a producer. There are, have been a few times in my career where maybe the director was a super famous person and I had to go through their assistant, you know, to, to communicate on a normal basis. Um, and working with Jordan Peele on Get Out and um, us re recently, uh, Jordan's a very busy man. He's got a lot of things happening right now. And um, so I limited my direct com uh, conversation and contact with him into what was absolutely necessary, but he always made himself available, um, which is, you know, absolutely amazing. I am always present during the mix. Um, it's really important for a sound supervisor to be on the, the mixing stage while the final process is happening. Um, there are so many different variables of things that uh, could change the wants and needs of directors or producers. Um, they could ask for last minute things or change decisions that they've made before based on the context of new music or a new edit that came in and we have to react and make sure that we um, support that client relationship that we've built, that relationship that we've built with the director. We need to be there for support so that if anything needs to be changed that we can change on the fly. Immersive sound is amazing. Um, it's, it's something that you can't really describe until you sit in the middle of, of something that 
you know, is in Dolby Atmos or IMAX or DTSX and you just, you understand how it's the, like the, the depth explodes right in front of you. Um, it's, it, it, it's really an amazing experience. Um, also on the Haunting of Hill House, because we had to make sure that the stereo and the 5.1 and the 7.1 translated well, often we had to do a, a what we call an A-B switch where we would go back and forth between the formats. And as you go up in the resolution of the formats from stereo to 5.1 to 7.1 to uh, Atmos, um, it's very clear that the world has a really interesting and um, impactful new depth. Now I want you two to get good rest. What if I have a bad dream? Well, I'm sure we can handle any dream you have. What if I dream that you sent us away into the dark and me got hurt? Really hurt? And I think that it's... It, Interestingly enough, the, the difference between a 5-1 and a 7-1 mix is incredible. You have a little more depth in the room, and it really opens up around you. It really feels like it's a, a 3D experience. And then you go one step up into the Dolby Atmos, and you have a latitude and longitude to the sounds that you're hearing. Um, it's, um, it's quite amazing. What if I'm so sad and scared of the dark out there that I put poison in me? For years and years. That's a really interesting question. Does a 5171 or stereo mix influence my job? It it makes it makes us make d different decisions as we're putting together our, our final product. Um, the way that people watch um, entertainment now is a little bit different than it used to be. Um, People are streaming more than they're going to the, the cinema. Um, maybe that's not the case, but a lot of people are, you know, streaming through Netflix and Amazon, Hulu. Um, and that means they're watching this entertainment uh, through a cell phone, an iPad, um, through you know, a sound bar, maybe a 5-1 setup at home. And uh, we have to be very careful about um, how we put forth our, our, our art um, a sound mix that we make sure that it translates well uh, to all the different formats. Um, it was something that we uh, thought was really important while doing The Haunting of Hill House uh, because we knew that um, natively we mixed The Haunting of Hill House in Atmos and it was in all its glory fantastic, but we knew most people were going to watch it either on their phone or on a small TV in stereo. So we needed to make sure while the Atmos mix was amazing and gave us what, you know, what we thought was an amazing experience, we needed to make sure the experience was the same for people who listened to The Haunting of Hill House on their stereo, uh, you know, stereo TV small box set or through their iPad. And my heart breaks right in half and I can't feel anything happy. <laughs> so I can't stand it anymore and I, I have to die. Until I'm on a silver table. It's my jaw wired shut. Why? <laughs> fond of The Haunting of Hill House. I think it's a fantastic um, piece of work, um, not just for the sound. I think we did a good job on the sound. I'm, I am proud of that. Um, but um, I do think that uh, uh, the writer and director is uh, a, long, uh, a longtime client of mine, and I respect him very much uh, for his filmmaking abilities. Um, I think he makes really good decisions and makes really good films. Um, <clears throat> and I'm very fond of the, the films that I did with Jordan Peele. I think that um, people received them well, and I think we did some really interesting work um, w within those films. Once I, once I finish a movie that's theatrical, um, I always find an excuse to, to go see it in, in a, a real uh, theatrical environment. Um, Mixing stages are fine-tuned instruments, and they often sound better than a lot of the 
the um, theatrical um, cinemas that that we have. Um, I've all, I've been to a, a few theatrical cinemas that have great sounding rooms, um, but it's always fun to be able to see the work, uh, your work, um, in uh, you know, out in the wild, um, and. Um, I really like seeing work that I've done uh, in front of other people. Um, uh, Jordan Peele's Us was a lot of fun to watch in a room with people um, because there's scary times and there's funny times and people were jumping and laughing and shrieking. And uh, it, it's quite an experience to, to see something uh, in a room with a, a room full of people that are being influenced. Um, I, I will say that um, I did recently see us in a Dolby, a Dolby cinema, which had um, Dolby Vision and played our, our Dolby mix, and it was fantastic. It was amazing. <laughs> There's been a lot of jobs that, that have been tough um, for different reasons. Um, and over the course of my, my career, um, you know, in the last eight years, I've done 115 films uh, in some capacity. I've been a part of, you know, 115 projects. So every project has its own um, different uh, challenges. I think one of the things that um, often is the most challenging um, are the ones with time constraints. Um, there's been several projects that have difficult design con concepts to, to tackle and to conquer, and I welcome those because challenges, creative challenges are, are very fun, um, and that helps feed the creative soul. But uh, time crunches, you know, the time challenges are the ones that nobody wants because then you have to make choices of what you do when and how and how to navigate things quickly and sometimes make sacrifices and nobody likes to make sacrifices to quality. Um, and the haunting of Hill house was a very quick, quick, uh, turnaround. It was very challenging in the time aspect. Um, we had about 12 weeks to edit and mix, uh, 10 episodes an hour long. You know, it was, uh, it was go time when we when, it, when we got started. It wasn't then there was no stopping until we were done.